when you Google Belize, this is what you see on the internet. But this really only represents about 5% of the country. The rest of the country is part of the Central American mainland and the majority of it is lush jungle. That is the Belize that we work in. Life as a Belizean can be uh, fun and exciting. You get to see uh, wild animals like uh, howler monkeys or, or iguanas. For them, life exists more living from day to day. We go into remote jungle villages and some of them live in grass huts and they pretty much have nothing. 80% of the population lives on 60 bucks a month or less. You know, the living condition here in Belize is, by our standards, pretty tough. A lot of these people are hungry. They have several kids in their family that they're trying to support. Children take care of the children. You see little two and three year olds holding babies on their hips. They care for each other. They would do anything for each other. They share everything. They bathe in rivers. They wash their clothes in the rivers. They wash their dishes in the rivers. Most of them don't have shoes. They walk around barefooted. They walk or ride a bicycle everywhere they go. They cook all day for just um, a simple dinner, beans and rice sometimes. For most of these villages, the church is the nicest building in the village. Yet in spite of not having very much and having some pretty difficult living conditions, they still seem to be very happy and grateful for what they do have. International Servants is a nonprofit organization here in Belize. We've had the opportunity to partner with them for a number of years now. They work with the indigenous pastors right here in their own country. They best minister to their people. Every time we come to Belize, we see new buildings being built. We see new communities being reached for Christ. Our goal here in Belize is to reach Belizeans who will reach Belize for Christ. Paul has a threefold plan that he, he works with where he just starts out supporting them totally and then about half supports and then they become self-sufficient as churches. It's a process and we've seen that happen over and over again. It's really been interesting to see how God's continued to use international servants to, to really build churches, not just start churches, but develop churches and continue to build churches until they become self-sufficient. So this is our fourth church to work on here in Belize. We come into them at all different stages. Usually they have a foundation poured and sometimes they have the walls up. We put a roof on, we put all the windows, all the doors in, took care of all the painting on the inside, the outside, did all the pews. Like we always do, we come in and wire the lights and give them basic electricity so they can have light for their worship services. It's been rewarding to build a church and to see a lot of the people that are gonna be coming to the church. This afternoon, we're working on Pastor Gregorio's house. We're wiring it and then they're also doing plumbing and painting and installing windows. All kinds of people come and work with us on construction. Some people that have a lot of skills like uh, James and Tim. Some people that don't know anything at all. And that's okay because we can teach you, we can use you. Uh, we're more concerned about your availability than we are your ability. Well, we get here in the morning and uh, we round all these kids up and we kind of stuff them all into a classroom. We start off with a puppet show and it's a puppet show that uh, teaches them about Christ's love for them and how Christ gives and pays a price for them. They really like the puppet show, they get a kick out of that. We put on a play for them and then we sing some songs and get them engaged in singing about the Lord. We also share snacks and we have a, a cross that has beads on it and we put those together and each bead on the cross signifies uh, a level of the gospel. Sometimes we think, well, having, having coconuts and pineapples and, and fruit you know, in your own backyard would be really neat, but by the same token, they do suffer with a lot of disease. The needs medically here in Belize are, are tremendous. Uh, many statistics say that Belize is either has the worst medical care in this hemisphere or the second worst. We're here in one of our medical clinics and as you can see we have doctors that have volunteered from the United States to come down and treat the people. We have a team on the other side that checks people in, they ask them what's wrong with them, they get vital signs, they weigh them, and then they put them in line for the doctors to see. And then they come over here to the providers, we write out their prescription, we send it to um, the pharmacist. It's really critical here in the villages, many simple procedures that would say only cost $80 or $90 at a hospital way in Belize City. The people here can't afford that. That's a month, a month and a half salary for a lot of these people. And so the, they go untreated and people die of simple things that they shouldn't die of. They don't have bandages and things to care for their wounds if they get an injury. Spider bites, snake bites. Lacerations, broken bones, infections that are of a tropical nature. In addition to the garden variety ear infections and basic skin conditions that are so common to this region. We recently saw a young boy who had a bite that got infected and then became abscessed. That's a simple thing in the States, 
left a big hole in his leg. Fortunately, we were able to treat that. They don't even have basic things like Tylenol or Motrin for fever. And then we see more complicated cases like cerebral palsy, heart murmurs. A year ago last June, Immaculata and her daughter Ziumara came to one of our medical clinics that we were holding here in one of the villages. She had a really serious heart murmur that definitely needed surgery. If she didn't get surgery within the next year or two, her health would drastically decline. She'd have problems feeding um, and possibly death. I worked really hard as soon as I got back to the States to call different hospitals, clinics, um, to try to find somebody to do the heart surgery for her. And I finally found some people that, that were willing to do the surgery. And now she's had the surgery just three weeks ago. And now she's two, two and a half years old. No murmur. <laughs> A perfect ending, I couldn't have asked for anything more. I would like to thank Amanda that she took care of my baby at the clinic over here in San Roman. And without she, I wouldn't know if my baby got heart murmur. And I thank all the people that helped me and my husband save my baby's life. When I was here last year, it was in the afternoon on our last day that we were seeing patients. I saw a woman who was in her second trimester of pregnancy. She had a fever of 102, she was vomiting, and we had nothing left to give her, and that broke my heart. And over the past year, I've been working along with the rest of the team to make sure that that doesn't happen again, that we have as much medication as we need. And you can see from the number of medication we have here that we've got plenty and it's not gonna, we're not gonna run out this year. All the villagers that come to the clinic, they're very thankful just to get, a, get an exam and have us answer some of their questions. They're thankful for all of the medicines that we give them. You know, coming to Belize is really about stepping outside of ourselves and serving, which is what was modeled to us by Christ. You, you really just have to take a big leap of faith and just, just make yourself do it that first time. I would just say, if you want to see God start to work in your own life, come start doing His work in other people's. You come down here thinking that I'm going to do all this great work and I'm going to bless all these people. That's nothing compared to the joy that fills your heart by doing God's work. Anyone at any stage in their faith, at any stage in their life, with any set of talents, they can all have something to give. I really encourage you to give, and they have so little, and really we have so much. I would strongly encourage people who can't come to, to be willing to give and help build a house or help build a church building or help kids go to school. There are so many opportunities. No gift is too small.